Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel and my first YouTube video. I'm Sheng Yu, currently a graduate from Kedah Matriculation College and I am currently waiting for my UPU results. So I thought, will it be a good time for me to like share my personal experiences and also tell you some general info about matriculation. So let's go! I think if you click into this video, it is safe for me to assume that you are actually considering matriculation or you are actually still thinking about what pre-university programs that you should pursue and you might have perhaps already entered matriculation as well so regardless of your intentions you are at the right place and i am here to break down matriculation to all of you all right so let's... but wait a little disclaimer here the things that i'm going to talk in all of my videos are all my personal experiences and also my personal research I do not have access to all the information across the internet so things might change across time. So please bear with me and let's go back to the video. Alright so Malaysian matriculation is actually a program, a pre-university program under the Ministry of Education of Malaysia. So it is actually offered to the SPM takers of that particular year and we actually have 17 colleges in Malaysia itself. So we have 12 normal colleges, we have 2 Mara colleges, and we have 3 engineering colleges. So 12 plus 2 plus 3, you'll get 17. This program is actually equivalent to STPM, A-levels, OSMAT, and foundation programs like offered in other universities as well. However, I would say that in all these programs, the only thing that you need to know is which universities that you can actually apply to using these certificates. And in this case, people would usually take A-levels because they think A-levels is like more widely known and you can actually study abroad using that certificate itself. And I would like to do some myth-busting here. People usually think that taking Malaysian matriculation certificates means that you cannot study abroad and you are locked locally. But that is not true at all and I would like to attach a list, I'll be showing it at the screen over here, to let you see the latest list of universities that you can still apply around the world using the Malaysian matriculation certificate. Alright, so after going through all the limitations about the universities that you can apply to and everything, like why would you still choose matriculation, right? So I'm here to tell you the reasons that why I chose matriculation and why I think matriculation should still remain a very very good choice for you. So the first thing that you would need to know is that matriculation is a fast track program. It is only 10 months, nothing more, nothing less. And right after that, you may enter university right away. It is a little bit like foundation, however foundation it is only accepted by that university offering uh, the foundation itself or their partnering universities. However, for matriculation, it is widely accepted by almost all the universities in Malaysia, public or private. And the next thing that you would need to know is if I bring STPM and A-levels as the comparison, you would see that STPM and A-levels, they actually require a minimum of one year to complete the program. So in this case, if you would not like to study for like such a long time, you should still consider Malaysian matriculation, especially if you're planning to study locally. Additionally, matriculation is also fully funded by the government. You don't have to pay for tuition, you don't have to pay for hostel. And the only money that you would be spending, one, is on food, two is on books and three is on a small processing fee for registration before entering the matriculation college. However, if you actually fit into a certain criteria, uh, which most people do, you will be offered an allowance. And for my year, it's 250 ringgit and it can be used to bear all these expenses. Okay, so all in all, you can see that matriculation is actually a really, really cost-effective program. You don't need to spend too much money. And I would say that it could reduce the financial burden on your family as well. So if you're looking for a program where you don't have to spend too much, Malaysian matriculation would always remain as your first choice. 
and you should seriously consider it. Once you've completed your matriculation certificate, you can actually apply to government universities using this certificate via the UPU system. So why is this UPU system like such a big deal? So when you go into UPU system, right, especially for matriculation students, you actually get a little bit more of a priority. And in that sense of way, you can actually pursue degrees which are heavily subsidized by the government. So as an example, to complete a medical degree, it will actually start from 300,000 300, ringgit in Malaysia. However, if you apply and got the medical degree through UPU, in my knowledge and through my seniors, you would only need to pay around 10,000 to 13,000 ringgit. So as you can see, there's a very, very, very huge deduction over there. So matriculation is actually also a hostel-based program as I talked about the hostel fees being free earlier on. So it is a hostel-based program so you would have to live out your 10 months in that college that you actually got into. And why do I put it as a plus point? This is because if you enter matriculation, it will mean that you are away from your family. In that sense of way, you will need to develop some survival skills. You need to learn how to take care of yourself, how to clean up after your mess, and many more things. But that is not the main point uh, over here. Because I think that if you're away from home and things like that, you will have like more opportunities to try out new things. And in that sense of way, you can do things that you didn't manage to do during your high school days. That being said, you can try out uh, singing, you can try out dancing, you can even do various sports and you can try out for the sports team as well. So, as you can see, the possibilities are actually endless, just like the benefits of matriculation. So after all the blabbering about all the benefits and things like that, let me enter to the cost structure of the program. So when applying to matriculation, you will be given four choices, which is Science Stream, Engineering Stream, Accounting Stream, and Professional Accounting Stream. However, Professional Accounting will only be open for Bumi Putras, right? So do keep that in mind. And I'll be focusing more on Science Stream as it is what I opted for and it is the most complex out of these four. So for Science Stream, after going through a selecting science, right, and you enter matriculation, you'll be given three different modules to choose from. However, this will be automatically assigned uh, according to your SPM results. Okay, so for the first uh, module, it will be Science Hayat. And in Science Hayat, you'll be given uh, four subjects, which is Biology, Physics, Chemistry, and Maths. Then you have Science Physical with Physics, Computer Science, Chemistry, and Maths. And the last one, the third module, you will have Science Computer, which will be Biology, Computer Science, Chemistry, and Maths. All right, so some people will think that, ah, what if I got the module that I didn't want to get? So in that sense of way, you can actually change your module. However, I cannot guarantee a success and you will need to talk to your school's counsellor or the teacher in charge. In my school, it's the counsellor. Okay? And uh, you would also need to take up four more extra subjects. Uh, and these four subjects are actually compulsory and it will be uh, like separated uh, according to your semesters and your stream as well. Okay, the four compulsory subjects will be Pengajian Am, Pendidikan Moral or Pendidikan Islam, Core Curriculum and English. English will be for both semesters, while these three will be separated uh, between the two semesters. Alright, so matriculation actually operates on a 60% coursework and 40% exam system. So this should remain unless they decided to change up some things, but for the time being, it should be the same. In your coursework, that 60%, you would have three types of uh, ways to give you the marks. The first one will be your assignments. The second one would be your UPS, which is a small exam conducted after learning certain topics. And the third one will be your lab test. All right. So these 60 marks are really, really important. But I can tell you it is possible to score full marks for this part. 
and for the 40%, it will be for your exams. And uh, in matriculation terms, we call it PSPM. So you have PSPM, uh, PSPM 1 for the first semester and PSPM 2 for the second semester. And why I say uh, that it is not very, very hard to score a 4 flat or get an A for matriculation, it is because you would only need 80 marks from the aggregate of the 60 and 40%. And in that case, as I said earlier on, right, you can get you can score full marks for that sixty percent mark. So for the forty percent, right, you will only need to score twenty marks, given you score full marks, ah. And in that twenty percent, right, when you convert it into like the exam marks, you will only need to score half of the paper. So most of the paper that you take will be over eighty. But if I'm not wrong, math will be over 100. So you would either need to score 40 marks or 50 marks for maths. Then in that sense of way, you can score an A because you have that 80. And I would say that many people actually fail to get the A or get 4 flat. I would say it's because the time given, as I said earlier on, it is fast track. The time given is really, really little and you have to absorb and learn that many information in that 10 months and of course another reason i would say it will be laziness as well okay so i will film another video talking about academics as a whole so this is only the general part and i would like tell you the breakdown of the subjects and also i'll be adding on another video as well talking about core curriculum and how you should score that 10 percent as well so after understanding everything, the cost structure, the benefits and things like that, it is time to apply. So matriculation, uh, as I said earlier on, is open for all SPM takers and you can all go into the link. I'll be like attaching it here or in the description below. And you just click into a link, then you'll be uh, sent to the government website showing you the matriculation program. So I don't know uh, when it will be open as it varies every single year so please do keep in touch with your school's counsellor even if you already how say are graduated and uh, they will be much more aware about it so they would know when it will open and close okay and another thing you need to keep in mind is that UPU Lepasan SPM is different with the matriculation system already so you need to know there are two separate entities Thus, you can apply for ASASI and matriculation at the same time and it will not overlap and cause you to not get either one. Before applying, definitely you have to check the requirements, right? So, the requirements, uh, I will show you uh, on my screen right now. And uh, if you would want to take a look at the requirements one by one, please do pause the video and check, okay? So, the first one that I will be showing you will be the science stream. So Science Stream, you would have two special programs, which is one is System Dual Semester and one is System Empat Semester, SDS and SES. So for SDS, it is uh, for us, which is for the 10 months program, and SES is for two years, okay? So one is one year program, one is two year program, okay? And you need to know that uh, PDT, which is SES, is only open for Bumi Putra, and you can see that SES uh, has lower requirements as well. Okay, and uh, now let's move on to accounting stream shown here. Then the next one will be professional accounting stream, also open for Bumi Putras only. And the last one will be for engineering stream. Okay, so you are required to score all these in order to enter matriculation. So definitely, I think some of you, when you look into like minimum requirements, you think like, oh, it's definitely doable. I can like do my best that I can score. A B's and C's then I can as well like just pass the things that I can get into matriculation yes that is true however I think it is best for you to keep in mind that there are people competing for these limited spots as well so getting the minimum requirements doesn't mean that you can straight away enter matriculation as they would have a different threshold of merit points each year so the first thing that we should understand how they calculate the merit points, right? And I'll be attaching the link to the merit point calculator as well in the description. It is the same, uh, it's in the website which I attached earlier on as well. So the first thing you need to know is that the way you should calculate merit points is separate into two parts. 
The first one will be your academic sector and the second one will be your core curriculum sector. The first academic segment, right, you will have 90%, which determines like majority of the marks. The next one will be a 10% of core curriculum. Okay, so let's go into academics first. So for academics, they will look into four subjects and each A plus that you score will be 25 marks. And if you score ten, uh, A plus for all four, then you add up all, uh, all 25 marks, you get 100 marks. And these 100 marks will be converted to 90%. However, okay, as you can see here, right, I'll show you. Uh, the first subject that you have to score A plus is maths. Second, at maths. Third one is uh, maths, at maths, chemistry, physics, or biology. So technically, if you're taking pure science, right, and no sub science, like my personal advice is score A plus for all five of them. Maths, at maths, chemistry, biology, physics, score A plus. So you don't need to worry about anything more. And you'll be you can easily apply for UPU as well. Uh in that case. So if you have all these five, then definitely you can apply for matriculation and you'll be safe with the 90%. And for the 10% of core curriculum, you have to like go for competitions, you have to take on positions in your school, right? I would say that try to aim for a minimum of eight. So in that sense of way, I would say that your marks will be around 98 marks, which is 98%, which is quite high already, I would say. But if you can score 10 marks for your core curriculum, definitely is a very, very good thing. As sometimes you'll miss your SPM as well, right? So uh, so I would say that if you get a 90% and you get the 8%, 98, definitely, I would say it's quite safe, okay? But it varies every year, so I cannot say for sure. And... For people who are asking, ah, what if I cannot score so many A+, plus, ah, I cannot score like so high for core curriculum, does it mean that I cannot be offered a place? No, that is not the case. It is because matriculation, right, they actually have a few intakes, which is not only one. The first intake, definitely, they will take people with high merit scores, but they will open the second intake and third intake. And uh, going through these intakes, the merit points will actually drop a little bit and you'll be offered a place because sometimes people enter the first intake, they will still like pull out, right? So you would have positions for a second and third intake. But definitely second and third won't be that much as well. Lah. So score as high as possible. Try your best. So this is all about matriculation in general. I did not add too much information. It may not be very, very detailed, but I hope that the information that I presented to you will be able to aid in your decision-making process. And good luck if you're applying for matriculation. And if you're already in matriculation, do your best, try your best, and I'm sure that you can see through that 10 months. Okay, since my YouTube channel is like relatively new, right? So I would like to talk about my future projects. So as mentioned earlier, I'll be talking about academics next, core curriculum. Then I'll move on to like a little bit of my personal journey then at last, it will be like how to score for flat and also that 10 marks for core curriculum. So I would like give you some guides and I'll tell you how to get those marks as well. So in the meantime, do subscribe, give me a thumbs up, maybe uh, turn on notifications as well. And I'll see you on the next one.